All right, everybody. I have seen Godzilla X Kong, and I got to say, it's a fun movie. But where do we go from there? Do we end up at Space Godzilla? Do we go to Biollante? Do we go to the Oxygen Destroyer, Destroya? What do we do? What if I told you I could think of the perfect story? So let me cook, and let's get into it. So, I have the perfect idea that would give Godzilla more character. Now you say, what do you mean? Well, Godzilla x Kong, fun movie, was very Kong-based and really gave Kong the King Kong title. So, what better way to make the next movie, like Wingard was saying, he wanted to essentially... You know, make Godzilla the main character and have Kong a little bit. But he also said he recently that he wants to touch on Destroya. Now, before you go to Destroya, I think you should go upon Godzilla's ancestors. Now, there was a book that came out called Godzilla Aftershock. And I believe it came out in 2019. And it essentially explains the skeleton that we see in Godzilla 2014 here. Now, as you can tell, it's a very large skeleton. We don't really know you know, what it is, but we can assume maybe it's some type of Godzilla, some type of ancestor or something on that lines. Well, what if I told you we actually know what that is? Let's get into that. So let's go over it. In Godzilla 2014, in 1999 is the setting. Miners in the Philippines uncovered a radiation pocket underground. Believing they had stumbled upon a valuable uranium deposit, they continued digging until the entire mine mysteriously collapsed into a massive underground cavern containing the skeleton of this unidentified monster. Monarch would dispatch Dr. Ishiro and essentially her assistant, Dr. Vivine, to inspect the cavern. Dr. Graham recognized the structure of the skeleton and asked Sarazawa if it was possibly a skeleton belonging to Godzilla. But he responded that this skeleton was much older. Attached to the skeleton's ribcage, there was a giant sack of two parasitic spores. One spore appeared dormant while the other one had split open and whatever emerged from it, leaving a trail out of the cavern and directly into the ocean. Monarch later constructed diagrams of the skeleton, labeling it species 5146 underscore Adam. Now, what was the skeleton Beretta? Dagon, or known in Japanese as Rajin. He was a titan resembling Godzilla he was essentially his ancestor, and his carcass was found in the 2014 Legendary Pictures, and once again, he goes into further novelization in the 2019 Godzilla Aftershock, which is a prequel to Godzilla King of the Monsters. Now, essentially, he would go on to fight Muto Prime, and Muto Prime would beat him and inject eggs into him, to which then he would go to the Philippines, he would die, and the Mutos would spore out, and a Godzilla would eventually get his revenge on it, for his ancestor in the 2014 movie, as we see that epic throat blast that Godzilla gives him. Pause. Now, the coolest part about this is Adam Wingard said, I want to give Godzilla the same kind of treatment that I gave Kong. How King Kong is now the thing and he got, you know, Suko and he and he met more of his ancestors and whatnot and all that kind of stuff. And the crazy part about that is it was so Kong centric. It was such a great movie, but it was so Kong centric. Now Let's say that Apex finds um, uh, Dagon or finds Mechagodzilla's parts once again, like after that fight. Now, let's say they take Dagon's body or his skeleton and they start generating tissue onto it and they start generating this or they found another creature. They found, you know, uh, they found out that the Ghidorah was more regenerative or they put, a, um, you know, robotic skeleton or robotic skin and everything onto this skeleton and they build mecha gigan now for you who know who gigan is i love gigan gigan has the hook hands or the hammer hands and he's got the spinning blade in his chest but how much cooler would it be to have those chainsaw hands and you know obviously build them up more mecha like like on the screen right now this would also give Godzilla more of like a humane kind of aspect and give us the ability to build upon him and show emotion through his eyes and expressions like they did in Godzilla x Kong and Godzilla vs. Kong with the fact that he has to fight one of his ancestors as he feels lonely as, you know, this creature is super strong, you know, because now we're at the fact that we have Godzilla Rose. How do you beat 
you know, like obviously he's going to have to go Space Godzilla, Destroya, Biollante, you know, Monster X, all these other characters. But before that, let's do Gigan. Let's give him a real threat and have Gigan really do some damage. Show us what those hooks can do. Possibly kill King Kong with it. How awesome would that be? And uh, I thought real quick I would go over a little bit of backstory for you guys for Gigan so you'd get a little better understanding of why I like this character so much. Here we go. Gigan appeared in many Godzilla iterations. In the Showa series, Gigan is a type of space dinosaur that was transformed into a cyborg by the M space hunter Nebula aliens in order to be used to their attempt to invade Earth, but obviously failed due to Godzilla. In Godzilla Final Wars, Gigan is an ancient cybernetic monster that was sent to Earth by the Zillions 12,000 years ago, where he was defeated by Mothra and subsequently mummified. In the year 20XX, Gigan's mummified corpse was discovered by the Earth Defense Force in Hokiato, and the monster was later reactivated by the controller of Planet X during the Zillion's invasion. In the continuity of the Godzilla anime series, or the trilogy, Gigan was a monster discovered in hibernation on the sea of the off coast of Siberia. Gigan was modified using Exif and Bilasudu technology and gradually converted into a cybernetic biological weapon used against Godzilla. Now, the crazy part about Gigan is he was so sadistic, bloodthirsty, and ferocious cutthroat is pretty much how they go to describe him. He would beat a character while they're down. He would impale them with his hammer hands, and he was just a monster. He could shoot lasers. He had the bud saw on his stomach, and then eventually he would go to become Mecha Gigan. This creature is insane, and he is just bloodthirsty, and I love it. He's appeared in movies like Godzilla vs. Gigan, Godzilla vs. Megalon, Zone Fighter, Adventure Godzilla Land 2, Get Going Godzilla Land, Godzilla Island, Godzilla Final Wars, and many, many more. Honestly, I've been thinking about doing like a big rewatch because I do need to catch up on a lot of these things. Obviously, I read you some things and I came up with some other things from the top of my head. Like obviously, I know that he uses hammer claws, that he made Godzilla absolutely beat to a bloody pulp and whatnot. But like, come on, let's be real now. That was like 20 something years ago. But I would like to do a rewatch, and I would like to go over the films if you guys would like that. If not, no worries. Um, also, we did start a website, obviously, thegeekycast.net. We're building up. It's pretty cool. Got a lot of theories, got a lot of scoops going out. Did the Fantastic Four stuff, so, you know. So if you want to stop on by, check that out. Be awesome. Subscribe to our email notifications and whatnot. Follow me on Twitter. I'm trying to grow Instagram, so if you can follow me on that as well, that would be awesome. If not, I appreciate you. Make sure to always get pictures of Spider-Man. See you in the next one.